We are so glad you could join us online for church today. Are you guys ready to have some fun? Me too. Let's play a game. We're gonna do a scavenger hunt. Here's how to play. When I say go, you will have 30 seconds to go find whatever I call out. You have to run, grab it, and run back here before the timer goes out. Are you ready? Okay, go find some fuzzy socks, go! You guys were quick. Now, are you ready for another round? Because this one's gonna be a little bit harder. You ready? All right, when I say go, find something. Round, go! Did you make it? Man, you guys are getting really good at this. Okay, are you ready for another round? Okay, when I say go, find your favorite toy, go! I'm sure that was a close one. You guys are getting really good at this though. Let's do another round. When I say go, I want you to find a marker or crayon, go! Man, I'm sure you guys had to dig for those markers or crayons. Okay, last round. Are you ready? When I say go, I want you to find something red. Go! Are you ready for the super bonus lightning round? Okay, here's what you're gonna do. When I say go, not yet. When I say go, you are gonna put back everything that you just found, but you only have 30 seconds. Okay, are you ready? Set, go! Three, 
You guys did such a great job at that super lightning bonus round. That was a lot of fun. And we have even more fun things to do today. Every week, we do something called a word declaration. We declare God's word because God's word is powerful. So go ahead and stand up on your feet and let's declare this over our lives right now. Let's shout this so loud that our neighbors can hear it, that everybody on our block can hear it. Here we go. I'm gonna count you down. If you know the motions, go ahead and do them with me. One, two, three, four.
so glad you could join us for church today. Did you know that next weekend is Easter? It's Easter, that's crazy. You know, there are a lot of really fun Easter traditions. I'm sure you have some of your own that you do with your family. For Easter, my family likes to color hard boiled eggs. We have a competition to see who can make the best, most creative Easter eggs. And uh, last year, I won. Anyway, all of those things like coloring eggs, Easter egg hunts, Easter dinner, and spending time with family are super fun and definitely a great part of Easter. But Easter is actually about something more, something even better than all of those things. It's a special weekend that we celebrate the love God has shown us through His Son, Jesus. Today, we're learning all about King Jesus and how He's worthy to be praised. Have you ever noticed how excited people get when they see someone famous? They show up in this big fancy limo. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, just like that. And then all these paparazzi guys with cameras come running up and they're taking pictures and all of them are on the red carpet. Whoa, <laughs> I wasn't really ready for my glamour shots today. <laughs> it can get kind of crazy. Some famous people even have their own airplane. Whoa. <laughs> now earlier, I said King Jesus is worthy to be praised. Jesus is the King. He has been described as the Prince of Peace in Isaiah 9, 6, and the King of Kings in 1 Timothy 6. Jesus was traveling to a town called Jerusalem, and when he arrived, his triumphal entry was very different than someone famous showing up in a limousine or a personal airplane. You see, Jesus was not the type of king the people in Israel expected. When Jesus arrived in the town of Jerusalem, he didn't show up in a limo or a personal plane or have very important leaders waiting to meet him or anything like that. Instead, Jesus, the savior of the world, rode into town on a humble donkey. You see, Jesus is most definitely the king. He is the king of a different kind of kingdom, the kingdom of God, a spiritual kingdom. So Jesus arrives in the city of Jerusalem riding a donkey. The people in the city had already heard about Jesus. They've heard about all of the amazing miracles he's done, the healing people have received from him, and that he even brought the dead back to life. The Bible says that on the day when Jesus rode into the city of Jerusalem on a donkey, the city was in uproar with people yelling and shouting. What were they shouting? Let's see it for ourselves. If you want to, you can pause this video and go get your Bible. We're looking for Luke 19, 37 through 38. That's Luke 19, 37 through 38. It will also be here on the screen too. It says, when he came near the place, the whole crowd of disciples began to joyfully praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord peace in heaven and glory in the highest. They may not have known it at the time, but by worshiping Jesus that day, they were actually fulfilling a prophecy that was written hundreds of years before. It's true. Check this out in Matthew 21, four through five. This took place to fulfill the prophecy that said, tell the people of Jerusalem, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble, riding on a donkey. So hundreds of years before Jesus was even born and lived on earth, there was a prophecy that the king would come to them riding on a donkey. A prophecy is basically God telling his people something that will happen in the future. Now fast forward, and here comes Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. Now, there were some people, the Pharisees, that didn't like that Jesus was being worshiped or that people were calling him king. You may have heard of these guys before. Yeah, they really didn't like Jesus or believe that he was king. They came up to Jesus and told him to tell the people to stop worshiping him. Jesus said to them, I tell you, if they keep quiet, these stones will cry out. King Jesus is so worthy to be praised that if people don't worship him, the rocks themselves will cry out and worship. King Jesus is worthy to be praised. Now guys, did you know that Jesus coming into Jerusalem is something we celebrate every year even now? It's called Palm Sunday. You may have heard of it before. Palm Sunday is actually this weekend. The people honored Jesus as he entered the city. They laid palm branches and coats and waved palm branches all over the place. So why palm branches? Palms represent 
victory and triumph. Jesus was there to triumph over evil and death and bring life and peace to all of those who would accept him. Jesus didn't have to come riding into town in something fancy like a limo or even have a bunch of people go tell everyone who he was. He was the true king of kings. The people threw their coats in front of him as a sign of honor, which is so much cooler than a celebrity red carpet. Palm Sunday was the beginning of the most important events in history. In the days following Palm Sunday, Jesus would tell stories of what the kingdom of God was like. He would have the last supper with the disciples, and then eventually it would lead Jesus to the cross, his death, and his resurrection. He would triumph over evil and bring peace to the hearts of all of those who believed. Isn't that awesome? Remember guys, Jesus is king, but he didn't live in a palace. He came riding on a humble donkey. He prayed for people and loved people when others wouldn't. He washed the feet of the disciples. He blessed children. He served others. And he forgives us for all of our sins and wants to be the king of our hearts. Jesus is the king of kings and he is worthy of our praise. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? You may be watching this today and maybe it's your first time to hear about King Jesus. Or maybe you've heard this before, but today, you wanna make the decision to make Jesus the king of your heart. And you know what? You can do that right where you are. You don't have to be in a church or inside of one of our classrooms to make that decision to follow Jesus. If you'd like to accept Jesus as the king of your heart, would you pray this with me? You can repeat this after me. Dear God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me and to pay the price for my sins. Jesus, today I choose to make you Lord of my life. Come live inside my heart. I want to live my life for you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so proud of you. That is the best decision of your entire life. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, I want you to do something. If your family is in the other room, run and tell them you just prayed this prayer. They are going to be so proud of you. We learned today that Jesus is King and He is worthy to be praised. So here's what I want to do. We're gonna spend some time worshiping and praising our King Jesus right now. He is so worthy of all honor and all praise. So whatever that looks like for you, if it's sitting on your couch, if it's raising your hands, if it's kneeling, Let's worship King Jesus with everything we have.
Wow, it has been so great worshiping with you guys today. I'm so proud of you and Jesus is so proud of you. Today, we just started a brand new series called Cross Equals Love. We have a challenge for you guys. We wanna see you guys create your own Cross Equals Love at home this week. So, get out your Lego bricks, your markers, Play-Doh, maybe even make it out of food. We'd love to see it. Have your parents tag us on social media at Gateway Kids. We love you guys and we are here for you. If you'd like to connect with us, text CONNECT to 71010. Thanks so much for having church with us today. We love you and we'll see you next week. Thank you.